Let's quickly move up to some other issues. Well, as it stands, it is the state governor, Ayodele Fauci, has made good his threat of suing the federal government over a decision made during the last NEC meeting where governors approved $1 billion to be deducted from the excess crude account. 16 local government chairmen in Ikiti State have sued the Attorney General of the Federation and the governors of the 36 states over the approval of the sum of $1 billion from the excess crude account of the Federation for the fight against insurgency. Let's continue with the conversation now. Dr. Ruben Abati, a former spokesperson of uh, former President Gulag Jonathan, a senior journalist here in Nigeria. Thank you so much for staying with us. Yeah, thank you. Uh, excess crude account. I mean, it's, it's been a major controversy Yes, and yes, in Nigeria. This very one, what makes it different? Well, I would have loved to say one or two things about what is in your query said, but, you know, I don't want to delay your program because it's important also in assessing the budgeting process to understand how government works and the very serious crisis of intergovernmental and intragovernmental rivalry that the Buhari government has been having to deal with. Maybe some of that they will deal with that. But let me return to the issue of uh, the, the, your, your immediate question. And to say this, I think that the governor of Ikiti State, Ayofayo Shea, is right in this instance. And he has done well by going to court. And I also think that Honorable Femi Bajabi Amila, who has made a number of informed comments about this problem, you know, is also uh, in order. The question to ask is that the approach in this instance, is it the right approach? Is it legal? legal? Is it in conformity with the Constitution? I listened to uh, the Vice President saying that, well, this is not just about Boko Haram alone, it's also about uh, security issues in the country and all that. I think that, with due respect, that's an afterthought because that's not what the governor, uh, what the chairman of the Governor's Forum told us. What we were told initially, and which was the issue, was that the governors decided, you know, to alienate public funds in the SS crude account. Uh, one uh, billion dollars, about 365 million naira, one billion, uh, 365 billion naira, one billion naira per day to fight, you know, an insurgency crisis, empower the, uh, the military int intelligence units, you know, on a daily basis, one billion, okay? That's what it, it comes to. It, that's what it comes to. And we had been told that this same Boko Haram had been technically defeated. And don't forget that in 2016, this same government took a loan of about $2.1 billion to deal with this same problem. So there are questions about integrity, about truthfulness. However, the more important question is that the money in the SS crude account belongs to all tiers of government. It belongs to all Nigerians. And Section 162 of the Constitution is very clear. Monies accruing to the Federation account, right, is to be appropriated. Now, no governor has the right to say I'm donating money belonging to, say, the local governments, right, on behalf of the local governments. And this is a critical issue that Fire wants to go and test in court. And I think it's an important issue. The, the, the governor of Again, defense yeah, yeah. is on the exclusive legislative list. It's the responsibility of the federal government. But what we are being told, you know, the blackmail is that, well, you know, uh, the, it's a throwback to Section 14 of the Constitution that security and welfare of the people is the responsibility of uh, government. the government. So yeah. people are saying, look, this is Boko Haram, we need to deal with it. But questions have to be raised. And I commend the people who are uh, raising these questions. Genuinely, if the, pre uh, the government thinks we need this money, because uh, uh, the military also had come out to say, we need to overhaul, we need to change uh, some of our uh, equipment, so some of our hardwares we're using, some of them th that are obsolete now. Um, speaking practically now, uh, it might be right to say we need this money, but do you think the approach is perhaps wrong? You know, that was the question I raised. I said, is the approach okay? Is it legal? Could they have uh, uh, come forward first? before they are taking that yeah, there decision. There must be the concurrence of all the owners of the money. No government can How would that happen? Abuja. How could that have happened? The state houses of assembly. Okay? Can say yes. But, 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 but Dr. Abati, there's even... Because a, this is money belonging to... Another legal issue where the National Assembly says, look, the excess crude account 
uh, these funds are not, uh, as, as is not recognized by them because these monies are not established to them according to law. Well, that, yeah, that, that is where the problem is. Uh, but that must not excuse a situation where anybody can just take money belonging to Nigerians and spend it as it likes. When the excess crude account was created in 2004 uh, by the Obasanjo government, the intention was to save for the raining day, you know, to create an account that where there is excess from the benchmark price for crude oil sales, you know, in any particular budget cycle, you keep that money and you can use it. But there was no act mm -hmm. properly establishing that to support the excess crude account. And one of the things the Nigerian government did later was to co create a sovereign wealth fund, mm. okay? But that's an investment fund. Okay. This one is savings. Right. But at the same time, the supreme law is in Section 162. All right. And I would like, you know, to see what happens with Fire O'Shea and others uh, going, going to, to the court to test the law. Uh, Dr. Abati, it's unfortunate. Time is not our friend, but... Dr. Abati, our friend here, we would have loved to, <laughs> to engage you on uh, so many other issues. But in 30 seconds, tell us, where do you think this will end? Well, I mean, I, I think that the rule of law is what should prevail at the end of the day. Mm. You know, if they go to court, they test it. And maybe all the questions that have been raised about the SS crew that can, can be settled in this one. Okay. But also know that there is a political dimension to it. There are persons who have raised issues and said, look, we don't think that the government is being honest in this regard. <laughs> we need to and that's a credibility question for the uh, administration. Dr. Ruben Abati, it's a pleasure talking Thank to you. you. Very much. Dr. Ruben Abati is a former spokesperson of the former uh, president, Gulag Jonathan. Thank you, everyone. So much to talk about tonight, but we must leave it at, at this point. I'm Sean Akimbalo, everyone. Bye.